Hey guys, it's Amelia, but not the pilot, just Amelia. It's March, we've made it to the third month of the year. Don't really know how we got here, but here we are. And this is my reading vlog, so welcome. Hopefully I'll read a bit more than I did last month. I think maybe I'm finally over my book hangover, so that's exciting. We'll see though, I don't know. Last month I only read like two books, which was because I read all the Young Dudes, which is a Marauders fanfic. 10 out of 10 recommend if you haven't read it already. Also, I made an entire spoiler-free video on it if you'd like to go check that out and learn more. I will link it up here and whatnot. However, this month, I think I've already made a very poor decision, as in today, March 1st, the Ides of March, I have begun reading The Priory of the Orange Tree. Just to give you a brief little intro to what this is and why this was a mistake. <laughs> it's 800 pages. It's essentially like an epic. It's an epic story of adventuring in far off worlds and stuff. And I'm really excited about it and I've heard a lot of things about it. I'm only like eight chapters in so far and it's taken forever, man. I don't know how I'm gonna get through these 800 pages. I feel like 800 pages is like nothing to me. Like I've read Outlander before. I just read All the Young Dudes. That was like 2000 pages. Like I've read the Harry Potters millions of times. I could read this. So I keep telling myself, but I don't know guys, I don't know. I mean, no spoilers cause I don't even know what's going on, but <laughs> What I've discovered so far is that the author does not really describe the characters. Maybe she will later on, but right now there's no character description. So I don't know what anyone looks like, which is making it hard for me to remember who's who. And then I also don't know where anybody is <laughs> because the author is using so much like crazy fantasy jargon, I guess you could say. Like, she'll be like, ah, yes, the knights of the table and the square thing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the hell is the knights of the table, the square thing? And there's no explanation. So hopefully, I'm just gonna persevere and we'll see if it makes sense eventually. I'm hoping to finish this, um, because I only have it for 13 days. It's an ebook from the New York Public Library, so... I'm hoping to finish it in time for it to be returned because you know how ebooks are. And that's where I am right now and I'm hoping to read a bunch of books this month. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Happy March, guys. Let's go. Hello, it is March 4th, 3rd? 4th, it's the 4th. Time is an illusion and I don't know what day it is anymore, but it's the 4th. I just wanted to give you a little update. I'm still reading Priory of the Orange Tree. I think I'm about chapter Seventeen, And I just wanted to say it does get better. I think it started becoming like actually interesting like oh I want to read this and I understand what's going on at around chapter 10. So that's not too far into the book. The chapters aren't like ridiculously long either for the most part but it's gotten really good now. I'm like invested in all the characters. I'm really interested to hear about their stories. I love how it's changing perspectives because then you get a little bored with one character then you get the next character's like whole plot it's very interesting and it's jumping around between i think four characters so i'm really vibing with it so far and then i've also started listening to the shadow and bone audiobook while i'm commuting because the new show is coming out on netflix april 23rd and i'm so freaking excited for it the trailer just came out the other day i had a reaction to it i'm so pumped for this so pumped. It looks like it's gonna be good. I hope it's gonna be good, but like I know I just read this series in like July of 2020, so I wanted to reread it though just to like freshen everything up in my mind because I don't remember some of like the phrases. Like I forgot what the jackets were called. They're called keftas. That's all I have for you today. I'm also still reading Kitchen, but it's going really slowly because now I'm trying to read Priory. So there's that. Good morning! It is March 10th now, which is Remus Lupin's birthday, so I'm celebrating a little bit today. <laughs> I have finished like three books, I think, since the last time I chatted with you guys. I listened to Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson as an audiobook. It was only like an hour and a half long, so thank god it was short, because it was boring as hell. It's essentially, he's just chatting about how nature is so great, 
and people are so terrible and like writers like to write because they like to hear themselves and poets like to make poems because they like to hear themselves talk and I was like are you just reading yourself like what is the point of this and it was really boring and I don't feel like I learned anything from it but I feel like probably back when he wrote this it was a big deal um and like a new concept but I feel like nowadays it's like yeah nature's cool people suck and writers write because they like to hear themselves speak I, I don't know what to tell you guys so zero to ten I don't recommend it but like if you have an hour and a half to kill might as well listen to the audiobook I don't know next I read kitchen I finally finished it it's actually three short stories which I didn't realize but the first two short stories are the same characters and like plot line and then the third one is a different story with different characters it was interesting because they were both about grieving and dealing with loss at a young age, which is very relevant right now. But it reminded me a lot of Haruki Murakami's writing style, and I don't know if that's just because that's how, like, Japanese sounds when it's translated into English, or if it is a result of, like, Japanese culture like influencing their writing like they have similar writing because they're both Japanese or if she does actually write sort of similar to Haruki Murakami I don't know but the writing style is very interesting because there's not particularly like a plot I guess I mean there was a plot but it's like that wasn't super important to the story it was more like oh you're just like going through life with this character and like seeing life in different perspectives and like feeling out the like society and how I don't know how to deal with things and learning from their experience which was interesting I liked it it's a quick little short read as well so that was pretty great the first story follows Mikage who has recently lost her grandma and she is now an orphan and a random friend of hers just like are like hey do you want to come live with us and so she's living with this boy and his mom who is a trans woman so that was interesting. The second story in Kitchen follows a girl who has recently lost her like childhood best friend who is also a boyfriend. He died in a car crash and so she's just trying to like deal with that and move forward with her life and so she's like hanging out with the younger brother a lot who obviously also lost his brother but also lost his girlfriend in the car crash. And then at the end, it's got a little surrealism to it. So Kitchen was good. I really liked it. And then next, I read The Stranger. I actually listened to it as an audiobook again, because it was only like three hours. This book's really, really short. It's interesting. I'll tell you that. It is a French author, and this is like a really famous classic, supposedly. And it follows this man, and he is implicated into this murder thing and then there's a trial at the end so it reminded me a lot of how to kill a mockingbird the man has asperger's so he has trouble deciphering people's emotions and expressing emotions and i thought this was written very interestingly because from the immediate first sentence of the book you know there's something that's different it's just a very interesting first sentence it starts mama died today or yesterday maybe i don't know <laughs> Which I think is just such an interesting, like, crazy sentence because it's so indifferent almost. And that's like, oh, someone died already. The book is starting like this. Great. I thought that one was pretty good. It was a little boring. I'm not super into, like, books that have courtroom cases. I get really, really bored with that. So <laughs> it was okay. But the writing style was very interesting. And then I also just started reading Harry Potter, but in Korean. I'm trying to read a full book in Korean this year. So I'm reading Harry Potter because I've read it so many times that I should know what's going on, even if I don't really understand all the words. So I'm trying to get some more vocabulary. And I'm really excited about this. I've literally only read two sentences <laughs> and translated them to figure out what's going on. So this is definitely going to take forever, but I started it. So there's that. And then I'm still reading The Pirate of the Orange Tree. I think I'm about 50% the way through, but I don't really know because the app that I'm using has no page numbers, which sucks. But I just started Almond, which is another Korean 
novel. I'm very excited about this one. It's very interesting already and it's very fast paced. The chapters are really really short. It's about a person who has alex alexithymia, which is a mental disorder where they have the inability to identify and express one's feelings. So that's where I'm at and I think I'm gonna listen to another audiobook today. I think it's called The Art of Loving. Um, this is also from the Namjoon BTS reading list. Um, if you haven't noticed, I've been reading a lot of the books on that list because I'm trying to make a video on it, which you will see later in April, I hope. Um, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, that's all I have for you today. I finished Priory of the Orange Tree. God, it took so long. I really didn't think I'd be able to do it in the like 14 days that the ebook gave me, but I did, so I'm really excited about that. I don't know why, but my ebook didn't have any page numbers, which was so extremely frustrating. It just had a little bar at the bottom that sort of showed you how far you had left, but even that wasn't very accurate, and I was like, but am I? Like, when does this end? A brief synopsis of Prior of an Orange Tree. It is a fantasy epic that features four main characters, essentially, that all eventually converge to one plot. It is full of diversity, sexually, racially, and it also features multiple matriarchal uh, like societies, which I thought was really cool. It really made me consider things sometimes because they would mention like, oh, that knight went to go do the thing. And I would automatically think, knight, okay, man. And then the next line would be like, she is doing great things. I was like, you're right, knights could be girls too. Like this is like, this is so, it was such a cool story. It's a fantasy epic which had dragons and witches and princesses and knights and all of the fantasy things you could want and pirates, it had pirates too, but it wasn't all about the macho man saving the girl and like the princess who like can't do anything and like the knights are all men. Nope, completely out the window. It was everything was matriarchal, which was so cool. Like all of the queendoms essentially were queens and then it hierarchically would go to their firstborn daughter, not the son. And then there was this cool little group of women assassin witches which was really cool <laughs> it was just a fun little fantasy story there's four characters right there is iad who is a witch warrior lady who was placed as a spy in the court of the one queendom to protect the queen without the queen knowing and then there's loth who is that queen's best friend from when they were kids and then there's Tane. Tane is on the other side of the world and she is an orphan who was raised to be a warrior to ride dragons. And then there's Nikolaus Rus, who is from that queendom I was talking about, but he was exiled by the queen to the other side of the world where Tane is. And he's an alchemist and he just, he runs into a lot of little problems that happen. <laughs> But the plot overall was also really cool. It is the rise of evil dark dragons who are going to take over the world versus the light good people and how the world and all the different countries who are opposed to each other because of relig religious and political beliefs need to come together to fight off this dark power and um, it was pretty neat. I would say this story was well written and like interesting but I did have problems remembering everything. It's like a Game of Thrones level amount of characters and weird like lingo <laughs> relating to the fantasy world. The world building was really amazing. There's like a crazy world. But the characters, there's just so many characters named and essentially only like six of the characters actually matter but you get everybody's full name every time she meets someone which is really frustrating but on top of that the author i think probably on purpose didn't describe any of the characters really i found very very difficult for me i understand she probably didn't want to describe characters so that it left it up to the reader to imagine who they want as these different people and 
allow for that diversity and like readers experience of imagining these characters but I couldn't keep the characters straight because I had no mental image of what they looked like which was really difficult for me. I still don't know what any of the characters look like so I did make it through the book fine but I, don't know, I wish I knew what they looked like because then I could imagine it better. I also had trouble remembering where everything was in the world. There is a map at the beginning of the book. I think there's two maps actually, but since I was on my ebook reader, I like didn't want to lose my place and whatnot, so I didn't flip back to that map very often, if at all. And so I was constantly confused about where everything was because the countries were referred to as like, oh, that's in the south, oh, in the east, in the west, and then there's a big ocean in the middle. But I still don't really know where everything is, map-wise. All the countries had different religions, which you get to know as you go through the book, but in the beginning they were using a lot of lingo that was like, counselor of virtues and the chief of justice and the and I just didn't know what the hell was going on. But they were also using like the equivalent of like, God be with you or like Godspeed type of thing, but in that religion. And so I was like, what are they saying? <laughs> what, what are they saying? I do not understand what's going on. <laughs> you get used to it after a while. And so my honest best advice for reading this book is it is very good. It's an epic fantasy, which was really cool. And honestly, just push through. Just keep pushing and you'll get through it. I want to say by like 100 pages in, 200 pages in was when I finally understood everything that was going on. I knew all the, the main characters. I knew what was like happening generally. And from there, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I think I would give it like four stars out of five. Just four flat. Because I very much enjoyed it, but it was not like my favorite all-time book, you know? Meanwhile, I'm still listening to the Shadow and Bone audiobook, and I'm almost done with the Art of Loving audiobook, and boy do I have so much to complain about that book. It sucks so much, but I'm gonna save it and tell you about it when I'm done, <laughs> because, god, that book, I just, ooh! And I'm still reading Almond, and I think today I'm going to start The Confessions of a Mask. I'm excited for that. And I want to start another fantasy book, but I don't really know which one I'm going to read next. I also just finished reading Out of the Blue, which was the epilogue for All the Young Dudes. That was very cute, which All the Young Dudes is a Marauders fanfic that is like the size of four books, but it's so good and it's honestly better than the Harry Potter series. So Out of the Blue follows one of the original characters, Grant, and it's his like 19 years later epilogue essentially. It's not 19 years though, I think it's like 10 from the Battle of Hogwarts. So all of the marauders and whatnot are dead. And so Grant is sad about this. And then he runs into Remus's son, Teddy, and that ensues. I don't know how I feel about the fact that like Teddy exists. I really like Teddy as a character mostly I guess because his entire character was created by fans like we just had the name and we ran with it but in this like little epilogue um I don't know I just still I just don't buy Remus and Tonks together. I just really don't buy it and I just I don't know and yeah I'm gonna go read it. Let's go! I do not recall the last time I checked in with you guys, I'm sorry, it's been a crazy week. But I did indeed finish three books, I think, since the last time we chatted. I finished The Art of Loving, which was also on my BTS reading list. That book was utterly awful. I don't know how to express my hatred for this book. It's extremely outdated on many points it was racist and sexist and I mm, it was just so awful I mean I guess in a way it was sort of like entertaining to listen to because it just it made me just like scoff which I don't think I've ever scoffed in my entire life so <laughs> but I listened to it as an audiobook um it's free on YouTube don't buy it it sucked um it's not worth listening to most of its points were based around the whole uh, there's five different types of love concept. How there's like motherly love, fatherly love, 
friend love, sexual love, God love, I, I guess. Um, and it's written by an old white man. And um, it just, it was really bad. It was like pretty much every single chapter was him just explaining how if a female is too anxious or if a female is uh, too excited or if a female is too overbearing, then she will ruin her children <laughs> and it's her fault. And how much effect a mother has on her child's love. Essentially, it's all a woman's fault. So I hated this book. It was awful. The only interesting point that it brought up was it discussed a little bit of like religion concept, I guess. And I thought it was an interesting concept that I hadn't thought of before. Discussing um, matriarchal religions versus patriarchal religions and how in a matriarchal religion, that the people that follow this god expect the love and they expect to be forgiven and loved consistently where if it's a patriarchal religion you feel like you have to earn that love which i thought was interesting how he's bringing his whole sexist conversation into this religious aspect that i never really thought about before so that was the only thing I took away from the entire thing. don't think I've ever read a book before that I wish I'd never read. Also, I don't think I've ever read a book that had an entire chapter on orgies. Um, so I want to thank Namjoon from BTS for <laughs> letting me experience that. 0 out of 10. Do not recommend. I also finished reading the Almond book which was another book on Namjoon's reading list. I really like this book. I give this five stars. The book is about a kid who has a disability where he doesn't have any emotions because the amygdalins or something, the little, the part of your brain that controls emotions was underdeveloped in his brain. And so he has trouble recognizing emotions and feeling emo or expressing, expressing emotions. He feels them sort of but he doesn't express them he doesn't understand when other people express them it was interesting reading this right after i read the stranger which is about a man who has asperger's because they were such a similar perspective reading from a perspective of someone who isn't expressing emotions the way most people do it's a very interesting perspective to read from i really enjoyed the story and that's why I gave it a five stars. I thought it was very well written and the characters are interesting. The plot was interesting. I did not like how it ended. I'm not going to spoil the ending, but it did sort of fantasize, romanticize, give a happy ending to this disability. And that just rubbed me the wrong way. But besides that, I did enjoy like the whole plot of it. It's obviously a fantasy book in the first place. So I enjoyed the, the arc of it. It was a well-rounded story. I understand why they ended it that way, but I, I, it made me a little uncomfortable. Then I also just finished Confessions of a Mask, which is another book from Namjoon's reading list. It's about a Japanese man who is gay and he's the heir to his family name. It discusses his consistent struggle throughout his life with his sexuality, but it was mostly just like a story of a horny teenage boy turning into a horny man. And it was just, uh, it was okay. I wasn't impressed by it. <laughs> I'm not really sure if it's because I listened to it as an audiobook and the audiobook sort of sounded like Siri was reading it to me, if that had a little effect on the story for me. But I don't, I don't know. I just, I feel like a lot of the books on Namjoon's list are all about like, not self-help books, but like those sort of surrealist self-realization books that help you learn something about yourself, and I'm sort of over it by now. And uh, this one was more the same for me, and it was just okay. I don't know. I don't think you need to read all of the books on his list. They're all sort of the same thing, and I just really wonder why he reads all these books. <laughs> but now I am currently reading Jung's Map of the Soul, which is essentially a textbook, and I'm uh, suffering through it. It's interesting, but I have to reread every sentence like four times before I understand what the hell I'm reading about. <laughs> so yeah, I'm reading that, and for some fluff, because I can't take it anymore, I've also begun reading 
Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is a young adult's novel that was really popular last year. I wanted to read it and never got around to it. It is about the son of the president falling in love with the prince of, like, the heir to the throne in England. And oh my god, the drama. So I'm reading that. It's a fun little, like, cute romance. And I think this upcoming week I will start reading 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I have this cute little pocket version of it, but I think I'm gonna listen to it as an audiobook, honestly. It smells really good. I will check in with you guys in a couple days. I still have a week and a half left in March, so we'll see how much more I can read. Ah, look what just arrived! Hi, so um, I bought a stick off the internet. <laughs> This is the new level of Harry Potter obsession that I've reached. I purchased a wand off of Heartwood Wands. Um, I kept seeing them all over TikTok and my friend was really obsessed with them, so she was telling me all about them, so I decided to get one and it's here! Also, unintentionally, today uh, my fashion inspiration was Draco from Half-Blood Prince because I was watching Harry Potter a lot this weekend. So that's what I'm giving you today. And then this came in the mail, which is like perfect. So let's open. Little dumb safety scissors in my house. <laughs> I can't believe it. Every time I peel off the tape, I get like a good chunk of it, but it's not coming off the seam. So then, oh, okay. Oh, what a nice sound. <laughs> I like that. This feels magical. Look at the feel! This is so cool. Like, oh my god, I'm so excited. It's got a double wrap. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like... Like, okay! Just like, oh, I want to do the bun thing. Wait, let's see if this works. <laughs> How do you do this? Ow. It's not going to stay. <laughs> but cool. It stayed. <laughs> so I just finished... 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I was listening to it as an audiobook. It was very cute. I liked it. Nice little adventure story. It's about a Frenchman who goes on this sea voyage to kill a big sea monster, but then he gets shipwrecked, but then the Nautilus picks him up. And the Nautilus is this, like, really big, fancy, technologically powered submarine run by Captain Nemo. So going into this, I thought it was going to be an extremely long book, and it was, like, fine. I think it was ten hours, so it's, like, sort of long for a book, but not too long. It was not that bad, and it was very exciting. It's, like, a little adventure story, but in the sea, and it's all about, like, walking on the bottom of the sea and going through underground tunnels and swimming with sharks and stuff like that, <laughs> which is really cool. It's, like, a cute little adventure story. Also... I'm just gonna put it out there. It gave me very gay vibes. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have read this story, but I'm pretty positive the author didn't mean to write it this way, but it sounds like all those young adult fantasy romances, <laughs> and it has like all those tropes, and I just thought it was hilarious. Right off when the man, the French man, like gets on to the Nautilus, they're like chatting with Captain Nemo and Captain Nemo is described as this like really cool mysterious man and he doesn't talk a lot but he's all about knowledge and all about like rough and tumble dark and mysterious type of guy. So they're already describing Captain Nemo as like the same as all those young adult novels do. <laughs> But then there's like a whole page and a half dedicated to discussing where he's going to sleep. And he's like, Captain Nemo literally is like, oh, your quarters are next to mine. <laughs> like they had a whole page talking about where he's going to sleep and how he was going to sleep really close to Captain Nemo and how he was so excited about that. I just thought it was really funny. <laughs> and then there's a couple other scenes where they're very like young adult 
fantasy romance tropes to me. It was like he was in danger and then Captain Nemo swoops in and how saves him. <laughs> okay, Jules Verne, I see you. And then there's also a part where Captain Nemo was like, we're gonna go somewhere dangerous. Is that okay with you? Because we're going and um, you could die. So let's go do it. And then he had to be like, yeah, that's really scary. Um, yes, I can do this. Let's go do something dangerous together. <laughs> it was just so funny because there's a lot of scenes like that. I don't know if you guys read it the same way, but it, that's how I perceived it. That was just, I thought it was really funny. <laughs> but all around, pretty good story. I gave it four out of five stars. It was like a good little fantasy adventure. Like, I liked it. That's what I just finished reading. I'm still reading Jung's Map of the Soul, which I recently found out is not pronounced Jung. It is pronounced Young. Young's Map of the Soul. <laughs> I'm still reading that. It's going okay. Um, I really want to start another fantasy book, so I might just do that. And I'm still listening to the Shadow and Bone audiobook and Harry Potter Prisoner of Azkaban audiobook. Next month, I plan on reading Nietzsche? 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 I don't know how to say his name. The Philosopher. I'm going to read Good and Evil or something. I also plan on reading The Unbearable Lightness of Being and Me Before You and Lord of the Flies and Into the Magic Shop, which are all books on the BTS reading challenge list that I've been doing for the past four months and I will be making that video soon. I'm very excited about it so please stay tuned for that. It should be on my channel up in April, at the end of April I think. But I also really want to read some fantasy books so I'm hoping on reading A Winter's Tale. I'm also really interested in reading The Cruel Prince series. I keep seeing it on TikTok so I'm trying to get that out of my library right now and also Akotar? Uh, it's like a court of throne, a court of thorns. All in all, my least favorite book that I read this month was definitely Art of Loving. Don't, don't even read it. Like, literally don't read it. Also, Nature was pretty bad. I forgot about that one. Those were both bad, so zero out of ten for both of them. But I think my overall top book of this month would definitely be Almond. I just really liked it as a full story, like it just was interesting and entertaining but teaches you about a different perspective. Also the cover is really pretty. <laughs> That's how I rate a lot of books, honestly. <laughs> so you should definitely check out Almond. I also feel like it's sort of underground, I don't want to say that, but like I don't see lots of people talking about this book and I thought it was really good. And it's also a Korean author, which I think is really cool, and I know Book Talk and booktube and such doesn't really promote a lot of foreign books besides Haruki Murakami, so you should check out Almond by Won Pyong Sun. Let me know down below if you have any reading suggestions, I'm always looking for more books. I've also attached my Goodreads here if you guys want to friend me and recommend me books, I would love that. I've also attached my Amazon wishlist if you would like to like, I don't know, contribute to my book buying obsession, that would be helpful. <laughs> I hope you guys like this video, thanks for watching, bye!